Google is such a dick sometimes. Google, you're a dick sometimes. Sorry, folks. I've said that a few times over the years. Where are you till? There you are. Where am I till? Here I am. Right? See what I mean? Like you get off track. I think I screwed up the video format. I'm just going to leave it if everything's synced up. I got a doozy for you tonight, folks. Really good stuff. Lots of laughs too, but some really good stuff. I've been at it all day. I cracked the secret code of tell you I'm not going to give it away yet hang on I guess the page up anybody know what's going on it usually takes us about five minutes to get wound up and then it's full steam ahead for the next 50 minutes and then I goof around hopefully at the end of it or in between it or during it hi everybody here we go I'm waiting for me to show up so I can see how much I screwed up today uh, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit better today, Mickey. Hi, Lori. Missing Sky. Bubba. Miss Milky was here earlier. Catcher K. Diver Dude. Broken Ass Islander. Oh, excuse me. I got a good one late for you, folks. Here we go. Hang on. What the hell? Google, you're a dick sometimes. Sorry, folks. Ah, yeah, life, life is good. Woo! We're good to go. So if the comments are to the left of us, we're live streaming. We usually live stream every night, 7, 8 o'clock. Uh, the preamble is put up about two hours before the show, 7 Pacific. You go to my page, go to my videos, click on videos, click on events, and you'll see if I got one scheduled. You can come here and chat, ask people questions. Um, I've been typing and on the hunt the entire day. Uh, Mexico, New Mexico. And I seen the Sons of Liberties was here, so if they don't show up or I can't catch their comment, because sometimes. Hi, Thomas! Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce your name, man. S C H O E N B R G R, folks, if you don't know, uh, if this is later, you're watching this, go into my favorites, and he's the second song. The first song's really good, too, Janie. She's, she's a sweetie. Um. But he's really talented. you really got to check him out. There's 2,000 other artists here, and they'll link you over to the other artists. But Thomas is definitely somebody you want to browse around on his site and enjoy that music, okay? Can't say enough good things about him. Hi, Pam, Kevin. And I usually say hi to everybody. It's not everybody, but as many as I can in the first few minutes. That's why it takes me five minutes to get going. And I'm ready to go, but let's get keep saying hi to a few people. Hi, Daniel. Uh, Isotoke, uh, Hokey Pokey, there you go, that's a great name, Red Button Studio, Sydney, Toxic, Aqua, Albert, ha, <laughs> Miss Milky, do I got everything sitting up straight, let me, let me move that, maybe, because sometimes if you don't, it, it looks kind of weird on an angle, it looks weird anyway, but, yeah, you know, all this hating up on poor old, I'm coming back down to the comments here in a second. But all this hating to the on the bananas is, is too much, you know? And here, I got that there. A uh, little bloomp. So thank you, Thomas. Thomas knows my haircut. <laughs> I like getting my hair cut, I just don't do it very often. In touch network. Lori, Dana tossed the bike. <laughs> Gun boy. You got some serious freaking firepower over there, mister. I was only kidding about that. <laughs> I ain't gonna take you on in a draw. Let's put it that way. Lunar! <laughs> Missing Sky. You find links below to a lot of these people, folks. You'll find their comments in the comment section. I'll link over to them. Toxic Albert. I got Dog's Rule. Howdy, -o, Dana. Let me see. Story about scallops today here in British Columbia. My buddy who owns uh, Muscle Farms out here for the last 25 years was telling me about that, so I beat all of you to it yesterday. He was talking to him on the phone. And he's got another crop in the water. Okay, so... <laughs> That's what you do, because you do lose crops, right? That's something I know.
because of my my friend right and you know we're watching we're right on the ocean okay I'm ready to bolt and a drop of a hat at this stage but I got business here that I can't just walk away from unless I got the bolt like personal business that I can't walk away from so but I will hopefully it goes with me but whatever uh, ba -ba -ba. hi Stephen Meyer uh, okay so let's just get going yeah I like my long hair too I missed it already I kept some of it I gave it to Zoe to hang on to she's under her pillow okay I can't keep up with that here we go let's have a few uh, laughs because <laughs> I've been typing all day and then let me come over this page. It might get a little bit loud because shit is running for uh, one of those days. Okay. So first off, okay, now we'll do that in a little tiny bit. So I guess I should declare I have no monetary interest in bananas, right? And I'll get serious here in a few minutes. Don't worry about it. I'm not being paid by banana lobbyists, right? I'm not. I do not own any shares in banana stocks. I don't. I do not own my own banana company. Pretty fine of them, but I don't own one. I don't even own a banana. I'm just an advocate for bananas because they don't speak English very good. And finding the truth from mainstream media is like sticking your arm down into a 45 gallon drum of nuclear waste looking for a dollar. And this is our 99th banana anonymous meeting. And we have a 100-step program. We think it's time for the President of the USA to give bananas clemency. Okay? And to make it a hate crime to equate bananas with radioactive fallout blackout. Before their reputations are ruined forever by the annex of the nuclear PR firms. I mean universities. Academics. We think it needlessly instills fear into the young sheeple and is a grievous miscarriage of academic creatures. I also want to clear up a little mistake I made last night. I know this is the second time I've ever had to do this, so but I did make a mistake last night about Prince William. He did not fire solid uranium-238 rounds, you know, the dirty bombs, into impoverished villages in Afghanistan. But Harry did. <laughs> Over and over in the family cars and hospitals and playgrounds and farms and lakes and rivers. He has lots of it. His mom owns British Petroleum where they make the dirty bombs. I mean the bullets. I mean dirty bombs. Well, he did say he wanted to go to Afghanistan and he finally did. And no one knows what he really did the whole time. Probably wasn't firing around dirty bombs like Harry. <laughs> And it wasn't peeling potatoes. And they did kill a few million people down there, you know. There's five million orphans. There's millions in refugee camps. And millions missing. Millions of widows. You know, it's a uranium-238 wasteland, but I don't think uh, Willie done anything when he was down there. He was just down there admired uh, the work of his mom's bomb factories, dirty bomb factories. Yeah, <laughs> look. Hey, Ma! Let me get a selfie with this bomb crater. <laughs> Used to be a playground. <laughs> look at the kids playing in the uranium dust. Ma, look, look, Bob, look. I mean, your highness. <laughs> I know I'm over the top sometimes. So what I went and done today was I went out to all the goblins, I mean, mainstream media, and I try to pick some sense out of what they're saying. <laughs> so you guys are in for a treat tonight because I'm pretty pissed off. I've been at it all day and I still ain't got it out of my system yet. So <laughs> It's really bad what they've done. But uh, it's kind of fun. It's very educational. It's very slick. It's very tricky. And I think it's important that this is highlighted about New Mexico. Carl is bad. How the hell did you come up with that name anyway? Maybe you deserve a little extra radiation for having a name like Carlsbad. Who knows? I'm not one to judge. And there are chat rooms out there that are 
want to learn about that, okay? And you'll the first link below is to News Channel 4. And you'll see the radioactive plume they got on TV. The plume. Because it never escaped, right? So they got a plume uh, with, with two bananas. It's a yellow banana inside of a blue banana. And then the plume heads towards Oklahoma. They got their own issues down there. They got uh, McAllister's Oklahoma. That's all they make is dirty bombs. The Queen probably owns half of that. Harry probably went down there and broke a bottle of uh, whiskey on the first processing line. And there's 20 train car loads a day to plead uranium coming out of Oklahoma. They got enough. But see, radiation doesn't respect any borders. And the best thing to do is let me go down through the headlines instead of rambling. Because I'll, I'll ramble anyway on the way. But. And I think this is really poignant that I went through. I, I truly did. I'd done my best relentlessly all day. Uh, and it wasn't boring. It should have been, but it wasn't because I was on the trail and I wanted to work it out. I wanted to get some information from mainstream media. And so I got to doozy tonight for everybody. Real reporting here, folks. First time ever. <laughs> so let's go back to March 29th, 1999. And WIPP is a hazardous race, race. Facilitate a deep geological repository for disposal of radioactive waste. Short for it's hell on earth. After 2 billion and 25 years of environmental studies, so they, they, that place was sourced there for 25 years. And what they found was that um, nothing penetrated it for 250 uh, million years. So it's an old ocean and it's a salt, right? And so they're down half a mile because this stuff is not very contaminated it's not very dangerous right so because it's not very dangerous they only went down a half a mile so you need to keep that in mind and there's so much discrepancy and so many people can't keep their stories straight that i was on the trail the entire day <laughs> it's it's quite the story and here we go and i'll make sure everything is looking good over here my audio my video is all coming in good folks And I know the headline is all screwed up, right? Disregard that. I know uh, the plume, the potassium-40 plumes, folks, is just a joke. Just before I get started, so we can clear that up. Because if I keep going there, and people really don't know what the hell is going on, it shows up here and starts watching this. They might actually think I'm talking about plutonium. Or, what did I say? Potassium-40 plumes. Right? So that's a, just a huge joke, in case you don't know what's going on. Just like the, the two bananas on the TV in the plume that doesn't exist, with two bananas in it. And a, doc, and a scientist from Oklahoma University, Dr. John Neal, talking about bananas, equating radioactive isotopes from a depository, whereas uranium-238 you should be looking for, not americium-141, which is... Uh, how the hell did that get into the equation? Why did anybody even put that into the equation? I'm a little confused about that one. Because there's... Um, you got to realize that it was uranium-238, right? Same thing as Prince Harry was shooting all over Afghanistan and Iraq. Uranium-238. And that stuff wasn't tipped or coated. But uh, the real nasty stuff, that's put a half a mile underground. I'm going to get there. Let me go. Here we go. Looks like the audio. Thank you, Miss Milky. You're way too kind. Here we go, folks. Let me see if I can get the... Why did the banana go to prune? Because he couldn't find a date. Ah, you beat me till I got to scratch that one out of my list now. Damn it. Thomas Hackney stole my joke. Sometimes I fart around too much, I know. On Monday, a federal judge in Washington allowed the plant, this is 1999, to receive his first shipment of nuclear waste, although a state permit is still pending for later shipments. So they didn't have a, a they didn't even have permits to ship that stuff, and they've done that for quite a while before they got permits. So we're going to have a dog barking in the background all night tonight, is that one of those nights? It's okay. It's the helms of Fukushima. 
They're barking at all the bad trolls here. Looking for a little clip of video they can use to demonize me with later. Which is okay. Uh, okay, here we go. The Underground Dump. This is 1999 from the New York Times. Wait, let me double check that one. Okay. New York Times, March 29th, 1999. So, the underground dump has been designed to receive nuclear waste and radioactive contaminated materials from 23 military sites across the nation. 23 military sites, that was 1999. And over a 35 year period, barring successful court challenges, almost 40,000 truckloads of waste will be taken to the plant from across the country. So, I'm establishing what this place actually truly is before I go on. The underground maze of 55 man made storage chambers in a salt flat from an old ocean, right, has the capacity to store 6 million cubic feet of waste, roughly half of the military's projected needs. They got a billion pounds of uranium to turn into uranium-238 bullets. Opponent says it's a folly to lock up the dangerous waste simply because the technology does not exist today to render it harmless. It's a very interesting statement. We may find in 50 years that the technologies are developed that this waste is a resource. And then a couple paragraphs down. All the drums will be smashed in until the pressure is equalized. That is why it is a perfect site, said John A. Heaton, a retired Carlsbad pharmacist who represents the area in the state legislature. Legislator. Legislation. But drooling because I haven't had my tea. I left it over there. Oh, no. Anyway, New York Times, February 9th, 2014. Half a mile beneath the desert surface, in thick salt beds, left behind by the seas that dried up hundreds of millions of years ago. I'm drooling tonight. The Department of Energy is carving out rooms as long as football fields and cramming them floor to ceiling with barrels and boxes of nuclear waste. Now, well, let me think this one through for a second. I kind of remember a lot of the moat pieces talking about how it's all in sarcophagus and they might have punctured one of them. Disregard that one. Let's keep going to the Washington Post on February the 15th. 19th. 24th. Reposted all AP stories. Uh, and in the February the 15th, they claimed the Energy, Energy Department spokesman, Roger Nelson, said that 139 workers above ground at the site near Carlsbad were told Saturday to stay where they were as a precaution. <laughs> like TSA, freeze! Can you hurry up and check me with the Geiger counter? None of them tested positive for marijuana. I mean, contamination. And all non-essential personnel were released. So they're prisoners? you got prisoners working there. That's what they're saying. Were released? They were hold, They should sue them for holding them against this kidnapping. If I was covering radioactive particles, I'd be wanting to run down the road. Ah! I got radioactive shit all over me. Wouldn't you? I don't know. You'd think it's a little bananas, but it's not really bananas. Devices, now I like this one, the devices that continuously monitor the air on the ground reach, there's a point to all this, a threshold level that automatically switches the ventilation system into a filtered mode. So when I used to filter all the freaking time, he couldn't qualify because you got all kinds of shit down there leaking. Well, like, let me go back to that for one second. You're putting drums in there for the last 15 years with a 10,000 year license and nobody's going to go down and inspect it because it's buried in there because this stuff caves around it, right? It, the, the radioactive waste dehydrates the salt around it, and so the salt is losing inches, like six inches a year. And so it will actually close it up and tomb it, is the theory. But, they had an alarm go off, and he says the monitors might have been, have been triggered in the past by radon fluctuation. How the frig does radon fluctuation go into this equation all of a sudden? When the site is full of nuclear waste, why don't you say, you know, there's a lot of radioactive particles that you can't contain because the friggin' drums 
are filled up with neptunium and americium and just unbelievable amounts of radioactive uranium-238 and there's some 234 and 235 and there's just some really weird shit in there making its own isotopes and possibly chain reactions because you got all these metals together that shouldn't be together that are just sludge like the sludge at Fukushima you know 40 million becquels here per cubic centimeter st stuff yeah this is stuff that went through a chain reaction this you know boxes and barrels you're saying oh it's all just harmless shit you really think everything they they never went in there after the fire the truck fire because truck fires are so fucking dangerous right you can't go in there ever again because of truck fires i know a fucking truck fire in there i go in there you go in there i got me a union behind me says i don't gotta go in there mister i'm a fucking american i know my rights i fucking know um that's what they're saying and you better fucking test me now see when they say it's gonna take two or three weeks to do the test i know i haven't got that part yet but just in case i forget it you need to do these tests within 24 hours you need to test it because a lot of this stuff you know disappears you can get a really heavy dose of uh, cesium or iodine-133 and iodine-132. Uh, hopefully you don't get the iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. But you can get these short-lived couple of day isotopes and do a lot of damage to a person, right? And there's ways to treat people that are, you know, it takes a lot of money. And, you're, and if you're just a slave, you're not going to get paid uh, to do it. But it's it's interesting that they would say the radon was setting off alarms over there because that would mean that the site is not stable, right? Because like in your house, you might get the two becquels, say, of radon. But that's because the whole friggin' planet does that, right? It has to be extraordinarily uh, amount of radon anywhere. We've never seen it uh, in habitable areas. You're not going to see it in the salt flat. They had a 25-year study in there. And they said, hey, you got to worry about the radon. we setting off fucking alarms all the time. It's just lies and nonsense and bullshit. And so with that fire and Mama Knox's, they go back to my two-minute video, find Mama Knox's link there of the fire itself. It's a really good video. Uh, and my video was pretty good too. I just took my own horn here. But you got to realize that... Um, there has to be releases when you're transferring all this shit, when you're bringing it in there. It's not all in these big containers, these sarcophagus. They can't friggin' build sarcophagus because that's why they're dumping it into the ocean. That's why there's 41 miles of open pits at Hanford in that 500-mile uh, nuclear waste facility, nuclear nightmare facility, where they dump 450 billion gallons directly into the soil. But because News Channel 4 had come out and shown the, the, the death plumes coming out of that place headed towards Oklahoma for some reason with a couple of bananas in it, but the fact that they showed a radioactive air dispersal for a few hundred miles means they're warning their own, right? They need that to convince their own loved ones, and so they needed that out there. That's the, that's, but they put the bananas there to trick you. Right, because everybody you go looking, gee, that looks pretty dangerous. Ah, oh, bananas, it's like freaking bananas. Like if you ate a banana, and the reason I keep saying that there's a link below to Channel Four where you, he equates the radioactive folly with a banana. Oh, you get more radioactivity from eating a banana, but you can't. If you eat a banana with 12 becquels of potassium 40, your body off gas is 12 becquels of potassium 40. If you eat a banana with 12 becquels of plutonium or uranium-238, your, your body has a radioactive particle in here that your body will attack, right? And it'll build a tumor around it, trying to put it in its own sarcophagus. That's what you're going to do to keep it in the sarcophagus is your body. It's not funny, I know, but your body makes tumors in responses to ingesting the nuclear chain reaction, chain or nuclear fission, whatever you want to call it, uh, particles these highly these leftover highly radioactive products now you got to realize that equipment goes with 
goes with the game anyway because it's bulky. But equipment wouldn't be the high radioactive particles you would put a half a mile under the ground, okay? Right, because that's that's not you, you would use that space to get rid of the toxic stuff. You wouldn't take the, the insignificant shit and put it down there, would you? Because you're desperate to get rid of it. Like Yukon Mountain, Utah Mountain, Yukon Mountain, I can't even remember. It had over 600 earthquakes in about a, a 15 year period, significant ones, within 50 miles of Yukon Mountain. Yukon Mountain, I gotta look it up here. Yukon Mountain location. So, was I messing with this? So, let me keep going. LA Times, February 18, 2014, James Concha. A former official at the Carlsbad site who also worked at the Yukon Mountain location where a nuclear dump is proposed is obviously independent. Defended the New Mexico site performance in the accident. That was sarcasm, by the way. He defended the site's performance in the accident. WIPP worked exactly as we designed it. And this event, the first ever in WIPP 15-year history, shows this very well. Concat said in an email to the Times, the LA Times, since it is the first event in a perfect operational history, it will be studied quite a bit more than should be warranted otherwise. It certainly is not a mess. No, that's why uh, they never went back in there, right? Because of a truck fire. Kanka was responding to scientists who said that if the contamination was widespread in the underground facility, the cleanup could be involved and expensive. So all of these places are just monster monies right now Kanka had argued that the kind of ancient salt formations that underlie the Carlo bad site and which also lies beneath much of the u.s can provide a quick safe and cost-effective solution for burying high level radioactive waste including but not limited to spent nuclear reactor fuel and processed nuclear bomb waste so like there's a lot of money riding on that these bananas don't get loose, right? That these death plumes of bananas, potassium-40, are not discovered by the sheeple. That being us. Including spent nuclear fuel. Let me say that one time. Including spent nuclear fuel. They want to put it in the fucking ground and run away. That's what they do anyway. If a nuclear plant like Fukushima, they melt down, everybody just ran. And the backup plan is the ocean comes in. So Oklahoma had a lot of earthquakes going on down there. Not earthquakes, but booms. And so if, uh, if this stuff melts out of a drum and a chain reaction goes down and hits the water tables, water expands per liter 1,300 cubic feet. Uh, quite the boom, right? You know, if you want to get a stump out of your garden, you get a really long garden hose and a, and a propane tank. And you turn the tank on, you got the hose down there first. This is very important. Put the hose down there. And what you need is a long, you need like like firecrackers and a slingshot. Or somebody with a lot of nerve, go up and throw like a seal lion bomb down there. And so you put all the, the propane under the, the stump and it'll pop the stump up for you. Well, think about the coriums or a chain reaction from these tanks getting loose of the tanks and melting its way down and finding water. Salt ain't going to stop 9,000 degree Fahrenheit from melting down. There's no evidence that's happening there. There. But you got to think about there's all kinds of other stuff in that, you know, going on down in the United States. Most people in the United States live within 50 miles of some kind of nuclear waste site where they're containing it. You got to think about how many silos America used to have, still has. I don't know, 40 or 50,000 or something like that. Retards out in people, farmers' field. I said they got rid of the farmers. They took over their fields with silos. Waiting for Harry to come in and shoot it up. And DU finished the job. Now, Contra never had nothing to worry about. So he just, he only works for them. And then he went and worked for Yukon Mountain, which had over 600 earthquakes in his regions in a 15 year period. Not very safe, folks. And so he's got a lot at stake here, his pension and a few other things. Now, the same day on February 18, 2014, another headline came out. 
Probably never had nothing to do with it, but influence him to get the fuck out there with his email and say something good. But the head of the nuclear safety for the cleanup of the former nuclear weapons site at Hanford, Washington, was fired. Same day, Contra sent out his emails and his PR campaign. Uh, Tuesday, after allegations she made over several years that the construction project was ignoring serious safety problems. You know, 41 miles of open pits of yellow cake. That they're trying to transfer those, that yellow cake down to Yukon. You just can't find anybody stupid enough to go in there and fill up the barrels. Or Nobody's worked that out anyway. They got to get the homeless out of Fukushima. They'll do it. They'll do it for $100. Tell mom I loved her. Um... But Donna Bushi, an employee of URS, said executives at the company told her she was being fired for unprofessional conduct. How dare you criticize the friggin' nuclear industry? Don't you know they run the friggin' country? The hell, man? So Contra, right, who worked at Carlsbad and works at Yucca Mountain and pension depends upon them doing really well. Or he's out of a friggin' pension. Uh, he wasn't influenced by her getting fired that day to start popping out friggin' emails anyway, was he? ABC News, February 20th. Two days later, the department said it's developing a plan for personnel to re-enter the plant and a shipment to the plant had been suspended. However, no shipments were scheduled from February the 14th to March the 10th, nothing to do with the fire on the 9th, because of an annual maintenance work. The readings were detected two weeks after a truck hauling salt out in an underground mine at the site caught fire, shutting operations for a few days. Way to go, ABC. Time to get your facts wrong. They never went back in, guys. Real yellow journalism over at the LA, ABC, all the rest of them. Let's keep going. Official says the fire was in an area separate from the nuclear fuel waste is stored. But they're not going back in just in case. <laughs> WIPP is the nation's first only open operating deep geological nuclear nuclear repository. Takes petroleum for goodness sakes. Contaminated waste. From all the dead beach like Los Alamo National Laboratory and all the other useless national defenses projects. Berries it in rooms cut from underground salt beds. Will you people stop asking? Damn, it's pretty rough on things. Am I making too much noise, folks? Banana cake! <laughs> the plant began operating in 1999. KCBD, February 24, 2014. Professor, Texas Tech University on Monday, Dr. Rob Chesser, Director for Environmental Radiation Studies, at the Texas Tech, not a banana hater right here, folks. He doesn't come out and say it. He's one of those closet banana haters. And he has studied nuclear issues for decades. And I'm going to play you the video because I can't stomach it. When asked if people are in danger from this leak, Chester said, absolutely not. He wants to assure people they have nothing to worry about. Nobody's going to try and hide it. No one's going to try to hide the truth from the public. Ha! And anyone that does would have severe repercussions in their job for doing that because we keep an eye on the lobbyists. All the lobbyists are watching the other lobbyists to make sure they're in line because their jobs are on the line too. Because you can't have a lobbyist out there like Ken Busler talking about potassium-40 Talking about cesium-137 when it gets 1,500 miles off the coastline from Japan turns to potassium-40 too many times that he does it every single time. Or Jay Cullen, not a great lobbyist from the University of British Columbia, who says that oh, yeah, radiation is just like getting uh, x-ray. Well, an x-ray, you're not ingesting hot particles, bitch. I don't know if that, that's nausea. Don't use the banana word, which he does. Ken Busler loves that one. We're probably never going to use it again. We get finished with him. 
But that's the whole point. Now keep going because I'm going to digress. Not that I haven't. It's just that I will. Commenters on social media have expressed a high level of concern about this leak and have openly been openly skeptical of media reports. But Chester says the experts mean what they say. There was no evidence that any radiation escaped the facility itself. Remember, this is on 24. All right. Yeah. Remember, News Channel 4 and my link below. They got fucking bananas almost all the way to Oklahoma. Plumes of potassium-40 and uranium-238 with plutonium. It's contaminated with plutonium and, re and uh, chain reaction ionized neptunium and americium Ooh, and all the good old 134s and 235s and 238s are all there. The 230, 239s. They're all jostling to get into your lungs. Into your lungs. Your lungs. Because we can count on the death plume from Channel 4. Right? And keep going. It'll make sense at some point. We learned the lessons from the Soviets after Chernobyl and the Japanese after Fukushima. Well, well, what about in 1940 in Russia when you evacuated 7,500 communities? Hello, I can't hear you now. You don't want to go there. What's your name again? Chester? Great name, man. That's had to be a tough one to grow up with. <laughs> I actually feel bad for you. It's kind of hard to... It's hard, man, to, to, shit, to shit on you anymore. I might have to move on. Nah. Just for a second, though, I had some emotions there for you. You never learned no lesson from the Soviets after Chernobyl. They evacuated 3,500 kilometers. You were like, Pfft. It's just plutonium. It's just the stuff. It's the americium. You know, you get it out of your, uh, you get it out of your smoke detector. Yeah, that's what it is. Your smoke detector. It's worse than bananas. Right? Why would they, you know, do they think all the nuclear waste facilities are full of bananas? Do you? Do you think they're all full of, uh, radon? Huh? Do you think there's other stuff out there? Maybe? I know, I know, Dana, that's a bit of a stretch. To think that a nuclear waste site would have nuclear waste on it. I know, revolutionary thought. It occurred to me, though, in a dream, in a dream, I was riding on um, Prince Philip's back, spanking him. And <laughs> that's the thought I don't want to have. We were, we were chatting about how Jimmy Savile was uh, the pimp for the BBC, right, for six decades. Because he was friggin' good at it, and because he was twisted, couldn't help himself, and he didn't mind sharing with the head of the BBC, right? Very innocent. Jimmy was a sneaky fucker. He, he, he only molested thousands of those. Think about, um, I just... We learned our lessons from the Soviet. Okay, let me finish that one. You have to be very open with the public. You can't hide anything. Right? We learned the lessons from Soviets after Chernobyl. Forget about Russia in the 1940s. 7,500 communities. 9,000 miles. Square miles still evacuated. The Soviet Chernobyl. Forget about the 3,500,000 ,000 square miles that are still evacuated. And the Japanese. Forget about the 30,000 Square miles were 300,000 backholes per square meter for a second. You have to be very open with the public. You can't hide anything. So why are we talking about radon? Why are we talking about bananas? And why are we talking about potassium-40 in the first place? Why is that in any of the equations of E equals MC square? And if you're going to hold yourself accountable, you've you got a lot of work ahead of you. Because everybody in every institution, in every university, in every professor, in every lobbyist, which are all the ex-institutions professors and academics, are they're talking about bananas all the time. Are they're talking about potassium-40 all the time. Are they're 
muddling the water by mentioning that uranium-230. I can have this house full of bananas. I won't get cancer. But if I got a piece of uranium-238-sized banana, they're going to fuck me up. Neutrons and x-rays. Forget about the gammas, the betas, and the alphas. Just that shit will blow you away if it's that too close to you. Crack one of those nuclear rods in the, the repository and hold that up alongside of your head for a few seconds. Make make your peace with whoever. This is what you're putting a half a mile underground. They don't put friggin' dirty gloves a half a mile underground. Okay? The hounds of Fukushima are never far away. They don't. Are there bananas and yellow cake uranium? Uh, it probably is. If you ask those friggers. Okay, let's go on. CNN, February 25th, 2014. Dose assessment. Modeling of the leak showed a potential dose of less than one millirem at each of the environmental sampling locations. About the tenth amount the person would receive from a chest x-ray. Yeah. How's that? A tent. A tent. So when you get an x-ray, you're not ingesting hot radioactive particles. I know it's a hard to wrap your mind around there, guys, at CNN. But if you ingest a hot radioactive particle, you'll get a tumor. It sequesters in your body, depending on what it is, where it goes. Your heart, your bones, your muscles. It'll sequester in your organs anyway, if it doesn't go anywhere else. <laughs> You know, you take all the iodine pills you want. Where do you take all the other radioactive material goes? Get sequestered in your body, in your organs, in your muscles, in your heart. If it gets in your blood, it's headed for your heart, for your brain. That's why you see the aneurysms and the heart attacks and the seizures. All right? Look up the Radchick video down below. Brilliant. Truly brilliant. What a wonderful collection. What a wonderful soul. What an amazing uh, person. To go to because so many people out there flying planes. The planes fly through the radioactive plumes. We switch back and forth sometimes to Fukushima, right? All that stuff that went up into the jet streams, up into the troposphere, up into the upper atmosphere, up into you know. Let me keep going on this. The average person living in the United States receives an annual dose of 620 millirems for exposure to natural occurring and other sources of radiation. A dip, 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 dub, 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 dub. Okay, there's a whole lot wrong with this. You get an x-ray, you're not ingesting radioactive isotopes. You get an x-ray, you walk away to the end of it. You ingest a radioactive isotope, and you can run all you want. It's in you. And it ain't going anywhere. You're not going to poop it out. Depending on how much you ingest. Your poop will be radioactive. Your pee will be radioactive. Like 53% of the children tested in Fukushima and Tokyo. The playgrounds in Tokyo are a million becquels. I know I'm jumping back and forth. But playgrounds in Tokyo, after decontamination, nothing funny, is a million becquels per square meter the size of your table. If you look at Channel 4, the video below, the newscast, I wouldn't listen to the audio. It's not worth it. Well, it's okay for a laugh. Got to go watch my two-minute video first, though. A few videos back. And they got the model. It's on my last two videos. It's a cover video, so I'll never forget it. Of uh, the plume. Now, I ridicule it and call it a potassium-40 plume. Banana porn. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's too funny. Bana banana plumes would be more scarier because bananas could fall and hurt you. Potassium-40s is just... Just me giving them a shot in the head. It's uranium-238. That's the plumes that you see in that picture. But they're not going to tell you, but they, they need that deer to warn their loved ones that you really got to get out of the way. Right? They really need that deer, see? And then they put two little bananas at the beginning of it. You got to go look at it. It's like the most amazing bananas you ever saw. There's two of them. A yellow one and a blue one. We all seen the blue bananas before, right? Stupid. And then they got then they got a, a university professor, Dr. John Nails, talking about bananas. All right, you get a bigger dose from a banana, and you will from uh, what's the name again? Carlsbad. Carlsbad. Give me my money. 
Not all cheap lobbyists. I gotta sell out a few dollars for it. I wanna make some fucking money off it. At least a pension. Okay. PBS February 25th, 2014, said the U.S. Department of Energy is in the report. Released money that an elevation in the levels of airborne radiation in the surrounding areas have been detected. Thank you very much. These concentration remains well below the level of public environmental harm. And the department said in the news release. Testing of areas around the site, which is a depository for radioactive waste. That's why it's a half a fuck of mile under the ground. Showed presence of excess radiation in the levels of about a tenth of the amount of radiation so we get from chest x-ray. According to the department's release, PBS, February 25th. Radiation coming from the leftover materials is nothing like an x-ray. It never was, never will be. An x-ray is not even covered under the NRC, right? The medical community licenses and governs that. Nobody even gives a shit about it. It's insignificant, short-lived, one, two-day. You know, if you spread it out in your community as it is, what it's used for, and you ran home and got your garter counter, when you come back, you couldn't find it. It's nothing to be, you know, it's nothing... When you're talking about what we're talking about, this chain reaction, uranium-238, is contaminated with the most toxic stuff imaginable, and its longevity is unimaginable as long as the Earth has been here itself. Uh, 4.5 billion half-life times 10. So all half-lives, see how they lie to you, right? A half-life, it just means lose half its strength. But it actually turns into another radioactive isotope and half of it stays there. And then that half decays uh, 4.5 billion years later of the uranium-238. It's contaminated with the plutonium, which got a 24,000 year half-life, but it went through a chain reaction. And so it's got a different gamma and beta and alpha, completely. Testing in the area around the site, which is a positive radio to waste, so the presence of excess radiation, a little bit one tenth, a tenth of the amount of the radiation someone get from a chest x-ray. See, the isotopes coming out of here got nothing to do with the isotopes or the radiation, the, the machine itself, the, the neutrons. You know, this, this technology that's used in the hospital has no right to be in this conversation, but it keeps coming up. That was PBS. New York Times, for someone living in town, I would say the dose was probably zero. It was probably zero. See, that's the key word there, right? But the plumes, if they come out of there, the dispersals, they disperse out. They come out very highly concentrated and they can disperse out. And each one of these are stingers. But I'm just trying to explain to you what's going on there, whether it's a serious event or not. The, the big question is why did Channel 4 use such a big plume? Right? And then why did they uh, ma make fun of it by using bananas in the equation when even a dummy would know better than that? And why don't you talk about uranium-238? Because that's the isotopes that are coming out of there. The plutonium is just, it's contaminated with plutonium because they can't extract all the plutonium out and not all of it is useful, right? And so they extract out what they can. And that's what this stuff is from and coming from. But here's a better one. New York Times, February 25th, for someone living in town, um, I would say the dose is probably zero. Probably less than zero, right, Russ? Russell... Hardy, director of the Carlsbad Environmental Monitoring Research Center, an independent monitoring organization as part of New Mexico State University, said in a tele-interview, tele-interview, when we get our studios, we'll get a few of these figures on the telephone, Tuesday, he said that the event would not add the background levels of radiation. What does background level of radiation got to do with nuclear radiation? Nothing. Insignificant, normal, Everyday background radiation is how life evolved. It has it's got nothing to do with this. It's insignificant. The background radiation in your house or in my house or in my clothing or in your clothing can only hold so much of the potassium or the insignificant radiation. It's not like it's all isotopes are floating off of this like a broken piece of fuel rod that's probably down two miles down 
two mile or a half mile down. It's, it's more ridiculous as we go through all this. But I'm making a, I'm going to make a really good point for everybody. A very, very poignant point here tonight. If I ever get finished, I ever find out what I'm doing here. But I keep my eye on the, on the clock. 50 minutes. Trying to kick it into second gear. Here we go. <clears throat> so, he said, the amount that was released was equivalent to an eyedropper full of water would contribute to the rise in the level of the Pacific Ocean. No one's been in there. Nobody knows what the damage is like. Nobody has a friggin' clue. Nobody wants to go in there. He won't go in there and come out and say, hey, it's okay. So he's a complete conjecture like the rest of them, right? Let's start moving now because i got a lot here to get through. So... Environmental Protection Agency, even in the desert, the danger to humans was small. The highest readings from the monitor indicated that a person would have to have inhaled radioactive material that would emit a dose over the person's lifetime of 3.4 millirams, an amount roughly equal to three days of natural background radiation. See, you only need to ingest one friggin' isotope in your body to get friggin cancer if it's plutonium or if it's uranium 238 you're going to get a growth in your body it's going to sequester into your organs it's going to cause lesions on your organs it's going to cause autoimmune diseases it's going to your white blood cells are going to come out and hammer at that and build a tumor around it it's you know it's the stupidest thing ever because why are they so desperate to always say that it's like bananas or it's like normal background radiation or it's like flying when D's got nothing to do with it unless you're flying around and <laughs> the jet streams off Fukushima the planes are contaminated uh, rad chick uh, Christina Consolo demonstrated that and is uh, it's extraordinary you got to watch the video if you've never seen it before down below uh, uh, several times it's it's a very important it's a revolutionary way of looking at what's going on here you're being trapped inside of heavily radiated and so there's a lot of uh, celebrities who fly all the time having seizures and heart attacks and strokes don't take my word on it go listen to what you got to say and research it yourself okay so downwind side of the plan to get the dose the person would have to stand for hours in the desert on the downwind side of the plan no they wouldn't they stood out in front of that they walked across that black smoke on mama Knox video they would have got the deadly dose. Per cubic meter of air, there was hundreds of thousands of particles, radioactive, hot radioactive particles. Otherwise, they would have been in that place after the truck caught fire. Right? That's what happened. Because you got all these, you know, these boxes and barrels and stuff nobody's going to touch. What are you going to do with it? Oh, I'm going to put it all in the sarcophagus. Is that why you dumped so much into the ocean? Because you can build these things? Is that why you got Yukon Mountain? Is that why you got that repository? Because you can put it in sarcophagus? Is it too much, too, uh, half a mile underground? Is it that safe? The Daily Kosh. Scientific America. Hang on. Scientific America, February 26th. Republished Nature's Magazine. Because they are too unscientific to report on their own. The agency estimated that a person at one of its above-ground monitoring stations would have to sustain a cumulative, a cumulative radiation exposure of one milliram, ten times less radiation than delivered during a typical X-ray. Scientific America doing it to you. You only got to ingest one radioactive hot particle, right? And there's no amount of normal background radiation will match that. You can eat 29 million bananas and you still won't get the same amount of radiation as that hot particle. Okay? It's a different radiation. We're talking about real stuff. They're talking about nonsense. Every one of them. That's why no one can trust them anymore. That's why no one can trust the universities or the institutions or the talking heads. The Daily Kosh. Today, the Department of Energy reported 13 workers internally contaminated while working above ground when the leak occurred. Nobody was in the truck. Nobody was down there. Oh, they're all having their freaking coffee breaks. DOE admits it has no clue how high the releases were or how much of an eternal dose 
the work is received. They do suspect it's mostly americium 241. You know, the stuff you get in your smoke detectors, right? This is the game. 238. Uranium. That's what it is. It's left over from the production of weaponized isotopes for the military industrial machine, machines to make directed energy weapons, lasers, because that's what they run on is uh, exotic isotopes. That's why this stuff is, stuff is so dangerous. What a healthy serving of plutonium on the side. The Department of Energy, February 26, 2014, PDF file. The materials were released for this event. The release event is radionuclides. The release material was predominantly americium-241. Lying bags of shit. Why do y'all got to lie so much for me? I guess your pension, your job, depends upon it. This is a radionuclide used in consumer smoke detectors. Well, how come we don't have any americium uh, nuclear reactors out there, mister? Huh? The? How come we ain't got no banana reactors out there? How come we don't take the ocean and turn it into a reactor? Oh, you could. You can take San Francisco Bay. There's enough uranium-238 there, Dana, to make all kinds of bombs. Shut up! You do jack shit, bitch. You got no technology for that. And that's a different radioactive material. I don't know if you could do it with that. You can't prove that. There's no peer review studies that prove that. There's conjectures and articles that people like Brian... I can't remember his name anymore. That doesn't matter. February 27. i got to get through this. I'm going to minutes left. Elevated radiation levels have been detected in the years surrounding the plant. New Channel 4 got a plume a couple of hundred miles long. Who cares about that? But officials have said the readings are too low to constitute a public threat. Now, this is AP. This is key. This is what the whole night was about. Everybody got their same stories, with a few extra added in sometimes, from the same AP story. Right? Everybody is running, just grabbed AP, so everybody got the same picture, everybody got the same author, everybody got the same story, everybody got the same opinion around the fuel tanks, or the coffee shops, or in the laundry mats, or in the taxis, or at home. Because anybody tries to fucking read, oh, yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, it was a little, blah, blah. It's all AP, though. See, everybody's reposting AP. AP puts it out, and then 10 seconds later, the bots and all the big sites like Fox and CNN and MSNBC, BBC, they aggregate it automatically. And so right around the entire planet is the same story. And what I done today was I went through all this, and here's what they say in all of them. The elevated amounts of radiation that have been detected offer no more risk than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. If you ingest a radioactive particle, it's in your fucking body. It ain't going nowhere. You can get all the eviction papers together and serve it. It ain't fucking leaving. But when you get an x-ray, it's gone. As soon as you walk away, that's it. It's not like a deposit of hot radioactive particles coming in, in your body. When you get on an airplane, you're not ingesting, well, unless you're coming out of Fukushima, flying through that jet stream. But normally you wouldn't get any more radioactive material. You get off the plane, now the planes are contaminated with radioactive uh, cesium-137 from Fukushima, cesium-134 from Fukushima. Let me keep going. ABC regurgitated AP story on the same day. But two days before, on February 25th, ABC ran a different story uh, by Jerry Clausing, which is AP. Also from AP. Joe Franco, who manages the Department of Energy, Carl's Band office. There is no risk from this event. There would be hazards to use your children. The elevated amount of radiation that have been detected in the, and around the planet have no more risk than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. And everybody's out there saying that same story. Thank you, shithead from G-E-R-I, Clausing, C-L-A-U-S-I-N-G. Most popular guy out there today. Everybody got his headline up there. I don't know who the fuck he is. Don't really care. Fox. More than 250 people, which is from AP, attended the forum where Sheriff and Joe Franco, the DEO, the DOE, site office manager, told someone, told sometimes skeptical, I'm rushing now, residents that the elevated amount of radiation that had been detected off no more risk than a dental x-ray or an airline flight. Gee, where did you hear that before? 
Huffington Post, February 22nd, regurgitated writers. Air mining alarms at the facility have been tripped in the past by malfunctions and functions and levels of radi- radon. And naturally occur in radioactive gas. Yeah, I got a whole fucking site full of radioactive waste. None of it's leaking. Ah, it's got to be radon. Fucking radon. Radon. No, no. We checked. It was radon. Yeah, it was radon. Sellafield, England. Eight million liters a day. Radioactive waste leaking out on the site. They had an alarm. Oh, we checked it. It was radon. <laughs> Go back to sleep. Oh, here comes another storm. That'll keep you shut up. It'll blow all that radiation away. CBS on February 22nd, 27th. More than 250 people attend at the forum. Blah, 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 blah. Amount of radiation has been detected. Offer no more risk than dental x-ray on airline flight. CBS, CBS. Way to go, CBS. Some really good hard reporting there, mister. Dental x-rays and airline planes and bananas. And have a nice day. Salon, February 27, pukes up. No more risk to the dental x-ray or an airline flight from AP. God bless Jerry. Closing. Darren Post, February 22nd. Pukes up. No more risk in a dental x-ray or an airline flight from AP. David Ike. Link me to Red Dirt Report. They picked up current August. That is Carl Spann's major newspaper. Yay! They report that the radioactive material was generated from the nation's nuclear weapon program during the Cold War era. Hello! No, it's just old gloves left over from hospitals and stuff. Dana, go back to sleep, mister. February 19th from uh, Carl's bad local current. Hardy said that even though small amounts of radiation were released and detected, it's important to note the radiation levels are low, well below any level of public or environmental hazard. We don't believe there is a connection between the earlier salt hauler truck event and this event, said Roger Nelson, acting DEO, DOE spokesperson on Saturday. But in the paragraph before it, the last sentence is, Operation at the WIPP have been halted since the morning of February the 5th. When a vehicle used to haul salt underground in the North Mine caught on fire, causing an immediate evacuation of all personnel to the surface. And the next sentence, they retract everything. We don't believe there is a connection between the earlier salt truck hauler event and this event. The statement was retracted by the DOE spokesperson, Deb Gill, on Monday who said the agency would not speculate on any potential cause for either accident or linkage to the two events. Because you haven't been back in there and you can't confirm it. (laughs) Okay, I'm almost finished. Sorry, folks. Manager Joe Franco in a written letter, however, on site sampling and surveys and environmental matter in the day, continued to support National Atmospheric Press Release Advisory Center modeling. I went over and typed in New Mexico, by the way. Sorry, this page does not exist. I typed in Carlsbad and said, sorry, this page does not exist. That's the modeling for America's National Atmospheric Release Advisory Center. Really good site, just can't get anything out of it. Pretty looking, though which indicates the airborne contamination was likely at very low levels. Likely. Unless you're saying, you look at the Channel 4, you see the plume headed towards Oklahoma. Why is there a plume headed towards Oklahoma and then everybody else is, it's like an x-ray, it's like a flying in a plane, it's like getting a dental x-ray, it's like bananas, like fucking bananas. Spokesperson Donovan Major said there was no way the radiation could be spread because workers were only exposed to internal dose. <laughs> Whew. Yukon Mountain, we're finished up. Yukon Mountain, in a statement for the Energy and Natural Resources Committee, the United States Senate Government, Grunton said that from 1976 to 1996, there had been more than 620 significant earthquakes within a 50 mile radius of the mountain. Uh, Yukon, 629, 20. So Yukon Mountain should never be a repository. It was a hell of a good spot to suck all the money out of all the, out of all the victims, right? Let me come in. We'll say goodnight to everybody. Hour and four minutes. See, if I didn't go for around so friggin' much, I could have finished that in an hour. Some nights I got to blow off a bit of steam. Uh, hi, Thomas. Want to be live 24? Carl's bad. <laughs> nice one. Aqua, tra la 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 la. 
Stacy Lang, right basic, nutty asses. Mickey says, Dan of the lies grow bigger daily, and when people stop dropping, start dropping dead, they will make a lie for that also. I'll put my friend. Pam, Toxic, Solar, I'll come in and read everybody's comments after. Thomas, Lori, Mary Sanders, thank you. Patrick, I have a few words for a close off the video. Uh, Starlight, MSVS, Basic Data, Annabeck, The Truth Just Ahead, Piano, Dana Toss, The Boyke, that's so funny. Solar, Kevin, Standing Foot, I uh, should get a few extra people in. We always like to say Stacy Lane and Patrick. Oh, everything's going crazy. Hang on, Stetson, Kathy. I need my glasses now because I've been reading. Tree, should have took me eyes away. The truth, uh, John Townsend. Woo, you think I would remember everybody's name by this stage, but all that work today, and I blew it off in an hour and six or seven minutes. I'll have to come in and read everybody's comments later, because I'm over the hour mark. I don't want to hold anybody any longer. Everybody's into a routine. Uh, let me put this out of the way. And the point I want to make for everybody is if, if it wasn't too bad, right? We know 13 people were affected with internal radiation doses, even though they lied about it for the first 10 days. And everybody's going to run, just run out with AP story as if it's insignificant, but significant enough to report on. So like nobody got their own opinion now. Everybody just runs with an AP report, which is what they have always done. This is how they control you. AP comes out with it. Everybody posts it. You try to come up with another narrative. Everybody read the same narrative, everybody talked about the same narrative, and the only way you can have a conversation with them is to talk about that narrative. Anything else uh, doesn't compute. And so that's pretty disappointing that the media out there that we should be able to turn to, that we're supposed to be able to turn to and trust, were uh, hopeless. I did get some tidbits out of it, because I was at it all day and I read every word, and then I went out and searched it myself to make sure it was actually true. <coughs> And that I had to go to alternative media to get onto the story, right? And bring it together. How poetic that the normal person uh, doesn't come out with that narrative, but the, the people that we're supposed to be able to depend upon, they come out with a narrative of x-rays, which are pointless and hopeless and useless, and are criminal, really, extraordinarily misleading, in all of them, including what's like Salon and... The semi-alternative media, uh, they done the same thing. So there you go. You know, all the media came out and, and insist on lying, particularly about how what the radiation is like, and particularly about radon, particularly about bananas. Damn bastards! And you know, just it was a total whitewash of the subject and the conversation. There was nothing there articulate, and everything was a basic reprint from AP. Right from Jerry Clausing, everything was just a re everything I read today was from Jerry. All day looking, and so what they do is they overwhelm you with the same story. No matter where you go, you end up with the same story. And but you know me, I was I could source things out and I was able to work it out. There is a release down there. It's a serious release, just like Fukushima. It's probably hard to tell the difference, but the fact that uh, News Channel Four came out. I showed a dispersion model, and the link is below to that. You can see it on my last two videos, particularly the two-minute one, because I, I got it in the video. And that got two bananas in it, too, by the way. Then And then he talked about all these lies. You, you know, something going on, obviously. Otherwise, they wouldn't do all this lying. They wouldn't go through all this energy, all this time, all this effort, right? take up all that space, unless there was something serious going on. Yes, we got to deal with it. By taking the 4,800 peer review academic studies every day used to enslave us and imprison us that are published and flip them around and actually solve some of these issues. So I know it's a novel idea, but that's just me. I'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Sorry about the long stream, but that was a good story and we had to get it out there. I'll try to goof, goof around twice as much tomorrow night. Take care.